This conference will now be recorded. Okay, now we are now recording mode. <clears throat> Okay, um, so today's session we're going to cover learning outcome two, which is understand how to manage change. Mm -hmm. So our indicative contents, we have three ma major indicative contents, which are analyze the importance of managing change effectively and the consequences of poor management of innovation and change. And we'll analyze effective change manage, management techniques, process and methodologies used, and then explain how to measure the impact of change. Uh, so uh, 2.1, we're going to see how uh, effective organization, organizational change the management. So in an organization, there are a couple of aspects that has to be taken in consideration when we have to uh, imp if we have to implement effectively. So some of them are clearly defined the change and alignment with the business goals. So it's always uh, required to have a a plan set a plan with goals which this plan do not have to uh, take a different pa path uh, of what they initially established so the from the the starting phase the planning phase going through each single development phase they have to follow the what they uh, the, the targets that they establish in order to achieve the goal, uh, determine the impact of change, then developing a communication strategy, provide effective training, implement a support structure, measuring the change process. So let's now look into more details for each of them. So I've already explained the first one. So you need to uh, clearly define the change and align the business with the goal. So each uh, single uh, member of the organization should have a clear understanding of what is uh, happening and what is the company trying to achieve. Then we have determined impacts of those affected. So once an organization knows exactly what they need to achieve and why, leaders should then determine the impact of change at various levels so therefore review the effect of each business unit and how it cascades through the organization structure to the individuals so by taking a, in consideration of changes you need to also consider how this will affect how this is going to impact each single member of uh, the organization if it's going to affect them in a positive way or in a negative way. Develop a, another aspect is develop a communication strategy where we need, we do know that uh, communication is one of the major key in an organization. So determine the most effective means of communication for the group or individual that will bring them on board. So a communication strategy should include a timeline for how the change will be uh, incrementally communicated. So there shouldn't be like lack of communication within the organization. All the information should be reached to each single member in a clear way. Uh, provide effective training to the staff. We do know that staff always need to be trained in order to uh, not, in order not for them business development but even for 
uh, the career personal development, which is the CPD. Training should include a suite of micro learning online modules or a blended learning approach, uh, incorporating face to face training session on the, on the job coaching or mentoring. So there's different way where training can be provided from another organization. You could have internal training or external training, depending on uh, how the company want to move forward and how they want to uh, structure this employees trainings implement uh, a support structure so it's always important to provide uh, a, uh, a support structure to all the employees and uh, always be available for any type of uh, emergency and understandable measure the change process so every uh, change should be tracked so all these data has to be collected and studied in order to see how they are progressing the time frame and uh, how effective is this uh, uh, changes so we do also have to consider what are the consequences of a poor management where in organizations uh they always uh go with uh, like surveys or uh type of uh, a focus group where they do understand how uh what they did well and what they did wrong so when uh it comes to to a failure the business might go into administration where they might have a, a redundancy of staff and then therefore they need to uh, uh, fire people when uh, the when the project fails <coughs> so these are a couple of consequences of service out uh, outrage outrage so to summarize uh, poor management low uh, might be caused by poor productivity active resistance uh, distant disinterest in the current or future state taking sick days or not showing up divide are created between us and them so these are a couple of uh bad uh, uh aspect that might happen within the organization now we're going into the second uh, uh, unit where we are going to analyze effective change management techniques process and methodology used so we already looked into this type of graphic yesterday <clears throat> so now there's a seven r of change management who raised the change? What is the reason for change? Why is the return required for the change? What are the risks involved in change? What resources are required to deliver the change? Who is responsible for creating, testing and implementing the change? What are the relationship between uh, this change and other changes? So this is the rule of the seminar which are several questions that has to be taken into consideration whenever we are planning to uh, move into change. So there's a couple of uh, models, the Lewis change management models, which has three phase of freeze, change and then refreeze. Then there's the nudge theory, which says Dutch theory is based upon the idea that by shaping the environment, also known as cho choice architecture, one can influence the likelihood that one op option is chosen over another by individuals. So it's just simply 
subdivided the corporation into uh, smaller branches and see how changes within the one uh, department can affect the other one. So a key factor of uh, knowledge theory is the, is the ability for an individual to maintain freedom of choice and to feel in control of the decision they make. Then there's all the different models, ad car model of change, which is based on awareness, design, knowledge, ability, and reinforcement. So therefore, all these uh, factors has to be uh, combined all together in order to have an effective model, which will lead into a change of uh, management. Now moving on, we have explained how to measure, how we we'll measure the impact of our change. So as we said, uh, everything has to be tracked. We always need to uh, be able to see, to have tangible changes. Not that we just think it's change, but at the end of the day, there's no, no any tangible results. So these are examples of a couple of sectors. Uh, for example, high employment satisfaction can be a, a, a tangible data. High performance, which can be seen by increase of productivity, uh, increased sales. So we can see that the business is growing, so they're making more profit. And uh, also high returns where we can see the, uh, the, the reputation of the, the company is growing as well. So uh, another, another measure is by seeing the employee engagement framework, where it measures how, they, uh, how engaged employees are within the organizations and how they feel about the uh, prospect, uh, prospection with uh, their managers and how they also grow in within the company. So uh, now uh, when it comes to analyze how uh, engaged are the employees, there are a couple of strategies, uh, which we always know the most known are surveys also there's a net promoter score focus group and uh, exit interviews <clears throat> so anonymous survey as we all know people everyone have been taking them is basically a scale where yeah you have to score a level of satisfaction where you go normally from strongly disagree to strongly agree this is a, a useful method of uh, of uh, measuring uh, the level of uh, the, to measure the effectiveness of change then there is net promoter score where customer loyalty and satisfaction measurement taken from asking customer how likely they are to recommend the product or service And then we have focus group, where are main, uh, mainly uh, where are mainly like group of five, six people put together, and uh, where they are having a discussion with topics being raised, and they all have to come to an agreement and see if uh, the changes implemented have been effective or, or not. And uh, last but not least, we have exit interview process, where, where these uh, employees are required to conduct these forms in order to, to rate the level of satisfaction. Uh, 
And uh, another uh, way to track performance of an uh, employee is through a KPI. So why would we use a KPI? KPI is used in uh, enterprises where they do have large amount of employees and each of them have been set with a, have been assigned with a target. So by for the employee, by having an employee achieving this target, that would uh, fast grow the business. You increase, uh, improve relevancy, reduce waste, increase visibility of the organization and uh, many other factors. So some challenges that might be, we might be facing when, uh, when working with uh, KPIs is could could be too many metrics, maybe the 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 level of the target assigned could be too high for the employee and create a lot of confusion and manage within the organization management. We have isolation isolation isolated metrics. Functional not linked to the top level goals. Out, outdated metrics, where it fails to recognize the need for eligibility with the crucial com competency today. Unreliable data and lack of ownership. So now, coming back to our topic, we have to see how to make an effective KPI. So a couple of questions that we might find relevant is how do we define success? Is success really measurable? So supply chains measurement must create a high structured means to identify the importance of issues that could keep company from achieving its long-term goal. So, in your opinion, do you think that success can be measurable? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, when it comes to an organizational uh, uh, success, it is always in terms of the uh, the revenue and the uh, and the overall growth of the organization, which is which is quantifiable. I think uh, that's how success can be measured. But yeah, when mm. it comes to employee satisfaction and all of that, so that can be measured through surveys only. It's it's not that that we can count it on uh, numbers or that way. So yeah, I think. Yes, I completely agree with uh, your opinion. So these strategies that have been used by pretty much every company, we can consider them quite effective. Um, so I feel like uh, the same question of uh, measuring progress can align with the same theory we've been given for success. Yeah. So uh, it is imperative for organization to measure progress at regular intervals in order to get the real impact of implementing efforts. So success, so progress can be tracked into different stages. That's how we can really effectively measure how uh, this implementation is working. Also, who is accountable for the result? An essential component of this four step process is uh, defining ownership for each KPI and metrics. So I think uh, owners and leaders should be the people that are taking accountability for the these results and for the effectiveness of the changes that they've been implemented. But at the same time, even employees do have their own uh, responsibility within the organization. <clears throat> so, 
this is everything for this session. Okay. And uh,